measuring efficiency. Efficiency talks about how a company is able to turn around its short-term resources, that is the current assets, to generate income. So efficiency ratio looks at various aspects of the company, such as the time it takes to buy the inventory, sell it off, especially to those who purchase on credit, and the time it will take them to retrieve the money from their customers, add it to the cash it already has, to transfer it back into inventory, or pay off those who granted them the goods on credit, in order to establish the goodwill to continue for their business not to be threatened. Now, this makes efficiency ratio more important because improvement in such ratios will improve profitability. So if you are able to know the right amount of inventory to hold, which will necessitate how long it will take to transfer into cash, and if you are able to retrieve monies from your customers, so if you give your customers 30 days, if you are able to get the money back within 30 days, then you are deemed to be efficient. If you buy the inventory, which every business has a timeline that has to be sold in order to get money to cover its necessary expenditures. If you sell it within the stipulated period, you are being efficient. If you buy from your suppliers on credit and you agree to pay them off within a scheduled period, if you are able to pay according to plan, you are being deemed to be efficient because if you flout the agreement, chances are that they will not be willing to trade with you on credit. And if the business doesn't hold enough cash to buy its crucial resources to trade, then they might have to fall on facilities, loan facilities, which comes at an extra cost. Or the business will have to scale down its activities, which might eventually affect its possibility to thrive in the market. Measuring efficiency, we will look at the receivables collection period, how long it takes for a business to collect monies from those they've sold to on credit. The payables payment period, how long it will take for a business to pay suppliers that they trade with on credit or they've bought from on credit. The inventory turnover period, how long it will take for the inventory they've bought to be sold either into receivables or into cash. So if we start with the receivables collection period, this looks at the period or how long it takes for the business to retrieve the cash from those they've sold to on credit because this cash will be needed either to repurchase inventory to sell to generate revenue or to pay suppliers that the inventories were bought from on credit. The formula is the receivables which can be found in the balance sheet divided by sales multiplied by 365 days because we are talking about period. If you get the period and again you measure it against a prior period, a competitor's receivable collection period or a stipulated industry metrics and it is lesser, then it means that the business is being efficient. Now, if it is higher, then the business will have to look into reducing the days or investigate the reason for that of the heightened days. It could be that the business sold a large quantity of goods to a customer deliberately because it was an opportunity. That would be fine. But if the business is being sloppy in its credit control operations, then that has to be revisited. We come to payables payments period. And here we are looking at how long it would take for the business to pay off debts being owed to suppliers. So the formula is payables divided by purchases. In some cases, you'd have to use cost of sales. Then you multiply by 365 days. So now, again, if you compare to your prior period, to an industry matrix or to a competitor, and the days is lower, then it means that you are going by your agreement as expected, and that will put your suppliers in a favorable or a happier point to continue to trade with you. Again, if it is higher, 
then you have to look into it whether it was agreed to by your supplier or the business is deliberately flouting it or is experiencing certain challenges the last will be the inventory turnover period so this is looking at how long it will take for the item that the business have bought with the intention of reselling to generate cash has been sold because a business primarily exists to trade trading comes in by having a core product selling it to your customers getting cash folding it back into inventories and then sell if you're able to sell your products faster it means that more money is coming into your hands and you're going to generate more returns so for example if you buy stocks by a month's time you sell it and each time you sell you generate a profit of thousand dollars it means that within a year you will be able to raise the inventory and sell it 12 times which is twelve thousand dollars however if it takes you two months to sell the inventory it means that you will be able to raise revenue six times in a year it means that you're going to only get six thousand dollars so the formula will be the inventory as at the end of the period which can also be found in the current asset column of the balance sheet divided by the cost of sales which can be found in the PL, multiplied by 365 days if you compare this and it's shorter than the comparative figure it is a good place for the business to be in if it is higher you would have to find out whether a large consignment of inventory were bought maybe in anticipation for a juicy contract to be won or to stock for a scarce period impending let's test our understanding so we look at the profit and loss we have revenue cost of sales with a gross profit of sixty thousand dollars we have salaries utilities depreciation granting us an operating profit of twenty five thousand so here we're only going to be needing the revenue the cost of sales okay now there's a breakdown for the cost of sales opening inventory is ten thousand dollars purchases was hundred and ten thousand dollars and then a closing inventory is also thirty thousand dollars for the balance sheet we have non current assets of three hundred thousand dollars current asset of 135 made up of inventory receivables and cash and bank they have the current liabilities which is made up of payables accruals totally $95,000 so when you come to solution we start with the receivables collection period the formula is receivables divided by sales multiplied by 365 days so that will give us 97 days that was worked out by dividing 40,000 which is the value of the receivables by 150,000 which is the value of the sales multiplied by 365 days if you come to the payables payment period the formula is payables divided by purchases multiplied by 365 days so when that is worked out we're going to get 232 days that is the payables of seventy thousand dollars divided by purchases of a hundred and ten thousand dollars multiplied by 365 days the last will be the inventory turnover period the formula is inventory divided by cost of sales multiplied by 365 days that will give us 122 days that is inventory of 30,000 divided by 90,000 cost of sales multiplied by 365 days